Hello everyone, welcome back to the video series of Semiconductor Basics. So in this video, we are going to learn about law of electrical neutrality and mass action law. So if you are first time to my channel, please consider subscribing. So first concept is law of electrical neutrality. So what does law of electrical neutrality tells you is the total positive charge is equal to the total positive negative charge since all intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor are electrically neutral the total positive charge is always equal to the total negative charge that is the total positive charge is given by nd plus holes is equal to the total negative charge is given by Na plus electrons okay so this is the law of electrical neutrality and this is the equation so Nd represents the donor impurity atoms so donor impurity atoms and Na represents the acceptor impurity atoms so total number of atoms the total number of impurity atoms in the case of uh, n type semiconductor and n a represents the total number of impurity atoms in the case of p type semiconductor so this is the electrical neutrality in the case of intrinsic semiconductor in the case of intrinsic semiconductor so in the case of intrinsic semiconductor we don't have any doping so n d is equal to n a is equal to zero therefore number of holes is equal to number of electrons or number of free electrons we will call so in the case of intrinsic semiconductor both nd is equal to nda is equal to zero similarly in the case of uh, n type semiconductor so in the case of n type semiconductor we are having donor impurities that is fifth group elements are being added to the pure intrinsic semiconductor therefore we only have nd and in this case na is equal to zero so when na is equal to zero now it becomes nd plus p is equal to n so since the number of holes in n type semiconductor holes are minority carriers so p is very less and it is negligible so p when p is negligible so what can we write so uh, in n type semiconductor we'll represent it pn and nn so pn is negligible so nn is almost or approximately equal to nd so nn is approximately equal to md similarly in the case of p type semiconductor in the case of p type semiconductor so here acceptor atoms are being added to the pure intrinsic semiconductor so therefore nd is equal to zero in this case so in this case pp is equal to na plus np since the electrons are minority carriers in the case of p type semiconductor that is they are less in number so np is negligible in the case of in the case of p type semiconductor therefore pp is almost equal to na so pp is almost equal to na so these two equations these two equations represents the majority carrier concentration in n type and p type respectively that is the majority carrier concentration in n type semiconductor is equal to nd that is donor atoms and the majority carrier concentration in the p type is equal to na that is acceptor atoms in p type semiconductor So next we'll discuss about mass action law. So mass action law states that the product of free electron and 
whole concentration in extrinsic and intrinsic semiconductor at a given temperature is constant so the product of this is constant so the product of free electron and hole concentration in intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor at a given temperature is constant which is given by n i square where n i represents the intrinsic concentration so n i represents the intrinsic concentration that is before adding the the concentration of atoms before adding the impurities the product so this product is equal to ni square so generally mass action law is used main so this is very important point so mass action law is used to find the minority carrier concentration so it is used to find the minority carrier concentration present in a semiconductor so it is generally used to calculate the minority carrier concentration present in a semiconductor so for first case that is intrinsic semiconductor we know that n is equal to p is equal to ni so if for uh, in a intrinsic semiconductor the total number of electrons is equal to total number of holes since n is equal to p both are equal so both are equal to ni so n is equal to p which is also equal to ni so in the case of n type semiconductor in the case of n type semiconductor as we have seen from law of electrical neutrality n n is equal to nd n n is equal to nd so from this equation so n n into p n is equal to n i square so therefore p n is equal to n i square by n n which is equal to n i square by n d so p n is equal to n i square by n d so this represents the so what is p n the whole concentration in n type semiconductor so p suffix n represents the whole concentration in n type semiconductor so holes in n type semiconductor are minority carriers and therefore the minority carrier concentration is given by using the mass action law so that is the main application of this mass action law similarly in the case of p type semiconductor so from uh, law of electrical neutrality we have seen that pp is almost equal to na so from this equation so np into pp is equal to ni square so np is equal to ni square by pp so is equal to ni square by na so what is np the electron concentration in p type semiconductor so electrons in p type semiconductor are minority carriers and so this value represents the minority carrier concentration which is given by ni square ni square by majority carrier concentration so in case of semiconductor in generally in the case of semiconductor so in n type semiconductor and in p type semiconductor so the majority carrier majority carrier concentration is nd and in the case of p type it is na so in all the problems so if uh, majority carrier concentration you have to take so you have to take the values of nd and na similarly so if you want to calculate the minority carrier concentration we can calculate by ni square by nd similarly here it is ni square by na so these are the values of majority and minority carrier concentration in n type and p type semiconductor so this is very important formulas so you have to remember them so this is about mass action law and its application in order to find the majority and minority concentrations in the next lecture we'll discuss about drift and diffusion currents so please stay tuned to my channel and consider subscribing thank you